Mark chapter 8. In those days, the multitude being very great, and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples on them and said unto them, I have compassion on the multitude, and that's what our Savior does. He has compassion. Because they have now been with me three days, and that's an interesting number throughout the Bible. You'll see three days, third day, three days, three nights, all through the scriptures. And have nothing to eat. Sound familiar? This has already happened. I don't know if you call it a biblical deja vu, but here it goes. And if I send them away fasting, no food, biblical definition, to their own houses, they will faint by the way, for divers, different kinds, sorts of people, of them came from far. So Jesus says, that, listen, here's a multitude, they're hungry, they got no food, fasting. If I start sending them home, they don't even have enough money to buy anything. And they're going to start passing out along the way. His disciples answered said, From whence came a man satisfied these men with bread here in the wilderness? Uh, it didn't catch on to them that we've already been through this. And yet we cannot pick on the disciples. Because how many times in our own personal, at least my life, I don't know about yours, how many times have you been in your life and God's blessed you and you forgot? You know, you get so in the problem at hand, you forget about what God has already done for you. And that's what you learn from the scriptures. I mean, we're so quick to pick on Peter. And yet there are Christians out there who, who are, they have the loving heart. And they speak with their mouth and you can't read the 66 books of the Bible. And not find you somewhere because there's all kinds of people. And the disciples, okay, we fed the 5,000. We had no food. We got we had bread and fish, and they're fed. They took up baskets. And the asked and said, well, how many loaves have he? Like Jesus didn't know. God. He wants man to answer. They should have came up to him and said, okay, Jesus, we're going to feed them. We have seven loaves of bread. You've done this before? We're going to do it again. No, that's not how it comes. And they commanded the people to sit down on the ground. And they took the seven, he took the seven loaves and gave thanks. Jesus, God, gave thanks for his meal. And prayed and gave to his disciples to sit before them. Like 5,000. And did to set them before the people, like the 5,000. They had a few small fishes, like the 5,000. He blessed, commanded to set them also before them. So they did eat and were filled, like the 5,000. Miracle. Now we're going to learn there's 4,000 here. Before it was 5,000. I don't care what kind of math logician you are, you can't get seven loaves into 4,000 people. And they took up the broken meat that was left, seven baskets. Before it was 12. 12, the number of Israel, seven, the number of completion. Now, why seven? Why not 12? Because of their unbelief. It should have dawned on them. Hey, we've done this before. And they acted the same way. They had the universe greatest preacher. They had the, the man that was without sin. The man that is God. The, the, the God that is man right there teaching, walk with them. And they still messed up. You can have the best preacher. You're going to mess up. 
And your preacher ain't ain't holy like like Jesus. And, and and for a pastor of a church, you're gonna say, "Well, listen, we've done this. I've done this message. Uh, we done, and the people still don't get it. So the disciples. And it's what the Holy Spirit does in us and through us. And they that had eaten were about four thousand, and he sent them away. Right? They've been fed. They've been taken care of." Now, you know, go home. Now, 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 look, look at the whole story there. It's, okay, it's Jesus and the people, the feeding, the miracle, and that's it. Nothing else. That's what Mark is about. It's about Jesus and what he does. <clears throat> and straightway he entered a ship with his disciples and came to the parts of Dalmatia. And the Pharisees came forth and began to question with them, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. See, they don't want results. This is not like Gideon that puts the fleece out. This is not like Gideon, give me a sign. This is, well, if you're really God, put a show on. Put a circus on. Dress up like a clown. Get the balloon. Do what the church does today. Because the people want a sign. They want a performance. They want everything but holiness. And he sighed deeply. Now this is the second time and only time we see in the Gospels of Jesus' sign. We, we saw it before with, with the man that was dumb and, and uh, uh, couldn't hear. Deaf. And remember, he looked up to heaven and sighed, and now he's being tempted. Now he's got the religious people, hey, give us a sign. And he's like, oh, man. And he sighed deeply. So you take scripture with scripture, he's aggravated. Was he aggravated with the healing of the deaf and the man that was dumb? Why does this generation seek after a sign? Well, Paul tells us Jews require a sign. That's not what we're talking about. Run the back to verse 11. The sign is to tempt him. If we can catch him up. And there were signs by the false prophet. When, when, uh, when Elijah tempts the, the prophets of Baal, he says, you take your, your, your calf, you cut them up, you lay them on them, and put no fire. Why did he say that? Because the enemies of the devil would put a little spark there. <laughs> and they would say their hocus pocus, fee five fo flum blowing. And then poof, here comes this fire. That's the dangers of, of Christianity and magic. It's not real. It's deception. They're not really looking for God. They're looking, they've been looking for, how can we defeat this man named Jesus? And Pilate says, because of envy. They're trying to twist him. They're trying to catch him at his words. Why does this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall no sign be given unto this generation. And he left them. They'll see how simple it is. And here's it. We don't get into much details. And entering into a ship again, departed to the other side. I mean, hey, if you want to hurry up, hey, we're going to do one chapter in Sunday school. I mean, why not Mark? <laughs> It's down and simple, plain and outright. Now the disciples have forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged him, say, you know, Jesus knows what's going on. Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of the Herod. Now we learn in Matthew, he's talking about the doctrine. The doctrine of the Pharisees, what the, all their things, and the doctrine of Herod had a had a religious following, a government following. 
And we have that in America today. You got two religions in America today. You got the Democratic religion, you got the Republican religion. And the Democrats got their God and the Republicans got their God. Jesus said, you know, house divided cannot stand. Well, in this country, we've got Republican and Democrat fighting each other. They can't get it. It's not going to stand. Biblical standard. And the leaven and Herod, it would be the Herodians that we've read about. These are the Jews that side with Herod. And they reason among themselves, saying, it is because we have no bread. Uh, no one, you know, hey, listen, you remember what Jesus did? Remember what we did the first time? We fed 5,000. Don't you just remember we, we just fed 4,000? No. You see, Jesus Christ had not died yet. He'd not been buried. He's not risen from the dead yet. The Holy Spirit has not entered into these men. And again, like I said, in our life, we go through so many difficulties. We go through so many troubles and problems in life, and we just don't think. Some people do. Some people don't. It doesn't take to after, afterwards to realize. And when Jesus knew, he said to him, why reason ye? Because ye have no bread. Perceive ye not yet, neither understand. Just no understanding. And it's quite simple. As I read through the life of Solomon, Solomon had wisdom. He had understanding, but he never recorded to have knowledge. The disciples knew. Jesus could take bread and do wonders. The disciples knew the miracles that Jesus could do. They had wisdom how to apply. They, they came across people who, who, who needed something. They brought them to Jesus. Understanding is your relationship to God. They missed that. They're in a boat. Oh, no, he's talking about bread. He's hungry. He wants a sandwich. We ain't got no bread. We're in trouble. He's in the ship. I'm hungry. We ain't got nothing. How about a tuna fish salmon? Or a fish salmon? Uh, Jesus, we just said we ain't got nothing. Boom. And a couple of fish jump in the boat. God can't do that. Did you forget about your stories from synagogue? How uh, 40 years in the wilderness, God gave them bread? And we're going to run to this, if, if the Lord tarry, we're going to run to this in John chapter 6. See, this happens three times. And it's not recorded in Mark. Jesus comes back from the, from the other side. There they are. They want to make him king because, you know, Jesus got the greatest soup kitchen. Because we don't have to buy the food. All we got to do is hear him preach and we get free food. Right, listen, there's nothing wrong with soup kitchen. What is your motive? Now, if your motive is is to preach, to, uh, you know, easy believing and just give them a great, wonderful, you know, how great you are kind of message and you fatten them up so they can sizzle more in hell, that ain't the purpose. They don't, I don't know what their standing is, but there is God in the boat. You don't have to worry about food. Not with Jesus around. And I don't think it's going to be that far across the, the, the Sea of Galilee that they're going to starve to death. I mean, is there, maybe there's a hook, there's a line and a hook in a boat. And you know that Peter, James, and John, or Andrew get, get the business. Because I'm sure if you've got two little fish, if there's a hook or something, something in the boat to catch two little fish, Jesus can feed you. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want to get myself in trouble with Jesus and the Father. I don't have that faith either. I get in troubles in life and I get myself into troubles in life and I forget how powerful God is. Having eyes and see, and see not. They've seen, they witness. 
having ears, ye hear not? And do ye not remember? No, you, that's the problem. John starts off in first John, our eyes have seen, our, hand, our hands have handled the word of God. Oh, what, what's going on in the boat, John? When I break the five loaves among the five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said unto him, Twelve. So they didn't forget. But they forgot that moment. We all, and I'm saying we all, when we come to trials and tribulations in our life, we need to stop. We need to seek God. We need to ask God, hey, what must I remember? Count your many blessings. Well, here's 12. But they forgot. And when the seven among the 4,000, seven loaves of bread among 4,000, I made baskets full of fragments that you take up. Seven. You didn't forget. But you forgot. We may not forget God, but we forgot God. And listen, when you come in life and there are dire emergencies, there are dire events, life and death, it ought not to be and I do it, we go into a panic mode. I mean, Luke is on that boat in Acts, and he says, listen, we all feared for our life. But Paul was down in the ship somewhere having a prayer meeting with God. And he said unto him, how is it that you do not understand? That God is able. And for the Christian today, okay, let's say he doesn't feed us. Let's say we do die of starvation. Well, we're absent from the body and present with the Lord. We can't die as Christians until God says, all right, time to die. And again, we're not promised prosperity. We are promised. We do have a promise of trials and tribulations and troubles until we get home. 